live Palestine! Long live Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! The Palestinian cause is not that hard to solve as they want you to believe. They want you to believe that the Middle East has been always in chaos, that there's been always bloodshed, and this is an unsolvable problem. That is a lie. That is a lie. Christians and Muslims and Jews have lived together for centuries. Neighbors. They lived in one community. So we can solve this if we do the right thing. Make a commitment to yourself that you will talk to someone else, someone who might not have heard about the Palestinian issue, someone who might have been under the influence of the other side. As we all know, there is plenty of them around. Take it easy on them. Be patient. Give them information. Answer their questions. If you do not know the answer, point them somewhere where they can get their answer to their question. Make a commitment to yourself to educate yourself about the Palestinian issue. Sometimes we get carried on just by emotions. Emotions, they probably serve you for the short run. But for the long run, we need a long sustained strategy that starts with you first. Learn about the Palestinian history. Learn about what happened in that region. So when somebody is trying to lay down lies on you, you have the weapon to defend it and to talk about the truth and the facts. We all have smartphones. I want you to go to the treeoflife.org. It is a great organization. There is a petition there that has a very short fact of what happened in these past decades. Educate yourself. Sign the petition. Point others to sign that petition that asks for just peace to the Palestinians and the Israelis as well. It's that it is not going to be demonstrations here that ends the Israeli occupation is going to be the Palestinian people themselves with solidarity from across the world, but we also recognize that we have a responsibility, we have a duty to be out here demonstrating at every chance. In New York City, yesterday, they went to the Israeli embassy and they said, we will not stand for your genocide. In Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Syracuse, Boston, all over the world, uh, London, uh, Melbourne, I've seen protests all over the place, and now I'm proud to be here in Hartford, and I hope on Thursday too, everyone comes out and we say 5.30 on Thursday, we will say let Gaza live, long live Palestine, we will not stand for genocide in our name. Hi there, I am with the Israel-Palestine Peace and Education and Action Group of Northeastern Connecticut, and it's wonderful to see everyone here today. We have been very upset with the headlines, at least we're getting a few headlines, of the people who have been killed and the many others who have been injured, both in the West Bank, in East Jerusalem, also in Gaza. So I personally thank you, thank you for being here today. And let's do what we can to get our congressional delegation to go to work in Congress and stop U.S. aid to Israel until all of this ceases. Thank you. 
Hi, uh, my name is uh, Mike Winterfield. I'm a uh, Tree of Life Educational Fund uh, board member. Uh, we uh, put together a lot of uh, conferences to uh, educate uh, people in this uh, country about uh, the oppression. Uh, I grew up in uh, the Jewish faith. Uh, there are a lot of uh, the traditions that I'm uh, proud of, but I can say uh, point blank that the oppression of the Palestinians is the most horrible contradiction of uh, the traditions that I grew up with. I went with uh, a Tree of Life interfaith group. 41 of us uh, went to the occupied territories in March. Uh, the stuff that I saw there, I mean, just sickened me. Uh, I am tired of the stereotyping of Palestinians. Uh, I am sick of the collective punishment. Uh, I am pained by the tendency of so many of the Jewish people to use the memories of the Holocaust to somehow justify what's happening right now. Uh, I can never forget, none of us can ever forget the deaths of six million Jewish people. But our responsibility is to the living. We do not honor the dead by persecuting the living. Thank, thanks to all of you for being here today. Okay, next, Salah Duwadi. So I go everybody, peace be upon you. I'm here today for March to avoid Tarek and his and his cousin Muhammad. And his cousin Muhammad was that I believe, he was burned and I don't like that. That's just crazy. I can't believe someone would be that cold hearted and take someone's life like that. Tarek was brutally beaten up and every time I look at the before and after of the picture, every time I look at his face and he's beaten up, I always see that he's in shock from when he got beat up. He looks like he's in shock and this will stay with him for the rest of his life. He is scarred. I couldn't live like that. I couldn't live like that. Being scarred for the rest of my life, being beaten up brutally by Israeli soldiers. And I just can't believe that the United States is giving money to Israel. And Israel is just creating violence. Violence is never the answer. That's what I always say. Violence is never the answer. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Uh, hi everybody, I'm here because I'm enraged because I heard on NPR the Israeli ambassador after the killing of the three Israelis calling the Palestinians a terrorist society. He is giving a label to all the Palestinians and calling them terrorists on NPR. After what happened and a 15 year old Palestinian got burned alive Two Palestinians were run over by an Israeli settler. A lot of people were arrested just uh, like um, for no reason. A lot of violence on the side of the Israeli uh, forces. I would like to say that there are double, double standards here and that we cannot, as Americans, take this double standard a people, a whole people, Palestinians. They were there for their land since 1948. They are still here. They are a living people. They deserve every dignity every human being deserves. And we're going to say to NPR to call again the Israeli ambassador and ask him to comment on what happened now. Let's see if he wants to call the Israeli society a terrorist society. Thank you, everybody. We have one uh, sign I don't think we talked about. It says, Boycott Israeli Goods. Boycott is something the Irish invented. I don't know if you know this, going back way back to the 1800s. 
when the landlord was so mean that all the people in the community decided they wouldn't have anything to do with them. The fellow's name was Captain Boycott. And so the word boycott has come to mean that ever since. And there's been all kinds of boycotts. I'll give you a little history lesson. I used to be a history teacher. There was a boycott of a man named Henry Ford. Yeah, the guy who invented the Ford. Now why would anybody boycott him? Because he hated Jews. He was the most important anti-Semite in the world before Henry Ford. And Jews of the world and sympathizers in the 20s refused to buy Fords. And he crumbled. In 1927, he apologized. So a boycott is a powerful weapon. Nowadays, you hear the term BDS, boycott, divestment, and sanctions. Like he said, I've been to Palestine and I've experienced firsthand the kind of segregation that Israel has against the Palestinians. And even though I'm not Palestinian myself, just being a Muslim with the hijab was enough for them to pull me aside in the airport, to pull me aside in checkpoints, to try and scare me holding the guns in front of me, pulling me off the bus with all of my uh, fellow travelers and interrogate me for hours. It's not acceptable. Just imagine what the Palestinians are going through. I had my U.S. passport, but imagine what they have. They have nothing. They have no one over there defending them. They have themselves. And they're trying to protect their families and their children so they can't speak up. So we need to today and every single day on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, tell the world and speak for whoever does not have a voice that what Israel is doing needs to stop. And the U.S. needs to stop blindly supporting Israel. And they need to stop funding them and funding the weapons that are going into killing innocent children, innocent women, innocent men all over Palestine in Gaza and torturing them. Uh, my name's John Fussell. I'm a labor lawyer here in Connecticut. Uh, I represent a number of unions. I'm also on the board of the Tree of Life organization. Um, it's wonderful to see you all out here today. Uh, this is so, so important. Um, we have so much work to do on this issue in order to change the mindset in our nation and in Washington, D.C., so that there can be justice for Palestinians, so that there can be justice and peace in Israel, Palestine. Um, it's not enough for us to just come out and march once in a while. We have to let our Congress people know that uh, the mindset in this country is changing, that people are going to demand equality, peace, freedom, and justice as a foreign policy of our nation. We spend over three and a half billion dollars a year giving our tax dollars to the state of Israel as they continue to colonize and build settlements throughout uh, the West Bank. Uh, there is no way that this solution, that, that a peaceful solution will result from, from that kind of activity. I want to just remind folks that there is a very important petition that you can sign to demonstrate to our Congress people that you support a just peace, not just a peace, a just peace, a fair peace. Um, and you can see that petition if you go to our website at www.tolef.com, or .org rather, that's Tree of Life. Um, is the website www.tolef.org and uh, there will be a link to the petition. Please sign your name. The more names that we get on that petition, the chances are greater that we will have people from Chris Murphy's office or from Blumenthal's office in the future, perhaps not. But that's our task, that's our challenge, is to change the mindset in this country. We have to build a broader movement. That means getting our churches involved, getting our unions involved, getting our civil rights organizations involved. This fight will not end until we do what we did uh, for, for the uh, fight in South Africa, which was to build a broad-based peace and justice movement for Palestine. Thank you.